trademark of British blues is the use of a straight feel on a blues. Now, you can hear traditional guys do this here and there, but it really came into the forefront with the British invasion with bands like Cream and Fleetwood Mac and Zeppelin. Instead of using a shuffle feel, one and two and three and four, we're using one, two, three, four. It's just a straight backbeat, and uh, it's the blueprint for rock and roll. So we're going to take a look at something very Zeppelin style. It's a riff-based thing, once again, as we discussed, uh, the riff-based stuff for blues, and British blues particularly. particularly. We're also going to use some power chords and some riffs to fill in the spot and a groove with the right hand. So it really kind of gets more groovy, and that's something that I think really evolved from the British musicians listening to American rhythm and blues and mixing it with standard blues and what they were going for at the time, too. So let's check out this track. That's got Jimmy Page all over it, doesn't it? So the first thing, it's an A blues with a cool little turnaround that gives it that twist to make it a little more rock and roll where uh, everything kind of went after that. So we have our basic 12-bar blues in A. A. D is our four. A again. And E is our turnaround. Here's where it changes up a little bit. We have E. Full E chord. D. Down the C. So that C is a little bit of a change. So that adds a nice little twist that's sort of new to the blues that came out of England. Now, the mixture of Elvis Presley and rock and roll into this really comes out here. So we're using power chords. First kind of time you're going to get on this riff. So A. Now I'm going to play it between a bounce between my G and E. That's a big thing. That sound. So that move is something we definitely want to get in your bag. There I'm just alternating between my C. I don't do it on that track, but it's open to me. Now another slick thing that I got from Jimmy Page was totally awesome. It's again the same idea, but I'm going to throw in the F sharp in the bass and bend it to the G. So that's a nice little thing we could add into there to add some flavor. And uh, that's definitely coming from those guys, the British guys. Now the four chord, I did the same idea, power chord. Now here I'm playing it really straight and simple. Just playing D and A. Back to this. And... Okay, so that's half of the, the equation. The other half is the right hand. If you watch my right hand, it's got a real cool funk overtone to this. And the, the bass drum, sorry, the hi-hat's doing 16th notes. So the right hand on my hand is doing the same thing. So now I'm not doing, I'm not sounding all those notes because that would be too much, but uh, I'm keeping this right hand going, and what that does is it locks up with the hi-hat, and that ensures my groove is going to be better than if I went... That just doesn't feel right. I'm not feeling it internally. For me, this locks in the time, it gets the groove, which is it's all about is getting the groove right. So if I'm feeling, I'm tapping my foot, I'm moving my body, not to try to like 
look at me, I'm into it. It's I can't play it right any other way. And if you look at all the great players, they're always the, the time is somewhere being shown in their body. In this case, uh, I'm certainly tapping my foot, but it's in my right hand. So. 